Hey, what's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here for Adorama TV. Coming here from my own studio for a change because Nikon actually stopped by and threw this in my hands. This is the new Nikon ZF. This is a really interesting release because I feel like the audience or the fan base or the user base really kind of wished this one into fruition because before this, we had the ZFC, which is cute colors. This is actually my model's camera. She owned this one. I said, you should come by the studio and check out what we're doing today. And I'm glad she did because you can actually get an idea of how far it came from the ZFC because when we knew that this was more of a Z50 with a retro housing and a flip out screen and different tactile feel to it, this really is its own camera. I know that we probably all thought that if a full frame ZFC came out, it would be a Z62 with a bunch of dials glued to it, but that isn't the case here. In fact, this has the same XP7 processor as the Z9 and Z8. So this is the third XP7 processor in the line for the Z series, which is super exciting. And that means that we get more capability. So while you do have a 24 megapixel full frame sensor like the Z62, I'm not gonna say it's the same sensor because I haven't gotten official word on it. This is a pre-production unit, so keep that in mind when you look at the images and my experience with it. But this also has the processor from the higher end cameras, which means you get 3D tracking autofocus, new features like focus point IBIS. I'm gonna go into that in a second, but there's other things that are going on here like touch to drag autofocus and other things that you can tell are coming from a processing standpoint, which is what you're getting with the newer processor. And this is where we're gonna see the Z series go from here on is with the newer processor, more capability. So since this has the new processor, we're seeing more new features. And two of those features I think you guys should know about is touch to drag autofocus. You can put this camera up to your eye and you select what quadrant of the screen you want to be the control, but you can actually just roll your finger around on the LCD and get the focus point where you want on the fly, which is a, a really fast way to work, but you kind of have to like want to work that way. So if you've been looking for that option on Z series, you got it here in the ZF. But the other thing is a first for Nikon, finally pixel shift. You're talking about four, eight, 16 or 32 shots that you can combine and post to get up to 96 megapixels. So for you macro guys or doing referential things like shooting paintings or something for an artist or something like that, where you need that ultra high res, you've got it here. Now, obviously this thing feels like a nice retro body, right? If you're one of those people that romanticizes having the camera in your hand and getting that tactile dial on it, you have it here, right? Your ISO, your shutter speed, and you even have an EV compensation dial, which is really nice to have, especially when you're in like, you know, after priority or shutter priority or something like that. But you also, if you're someone that's in the more modern realm, like I'm totally stuck more in towards the modern style of bodies with the thumb wheel and the four finger dial. Well, you have that here as well. So you have your choice there, just like you did on the ZFC. And if you want to add on to the vintage feel of it, you get this nice little old school LCD screen right in between your shutter dial and your EV compensation dial. It tells you your f-stop in that Casio beautiful looking style of uh, digital numbers. So if you're someone that doesn't want to keep looking at the lens, if there is an, ap an aperture dial on it or looking at the screen, you've got it right there as well, which is kind of nice. Because then when you look at the top of the camera, you have all your settings right there. So it's like a micro top screen, I guess you'd say, and I'm a big fan of top screens. But what was really cool here is that under the shutter speed dial is I've got this kind of, I'm gonna call it a mode dial, I don't know what they're calling it, but not only does it go from video to stills, but if you swing it over all the way, it goes to black and white automatically. And you don't think much of it because you can always just set black and white in the menu, but being able to just have the camera to my face and just deciding to go into black and white on the fly, that's a user experience thing. That's something that makes you wanna pick it up, that makes you wanna shoot that next shot, that doesn't break your chain of thought when you're being creative. And I had to try the black and white in here. I've always liked the way Nikon does grayscale. I'm a big, crazy, psychotic mess when it comes to tonality. I like that silvery look. I like details in my blacks, I like details in my highlights, but I like that crispy contrast kind of feel. I'm not a, I'm not a Calvin Klein flat gray guy. I'm sorry, I know they, they've made a whole thing out of it. It's a cultural thing, but I, I like my black and white the way I like it. And this actually gives you certain monochrome settings to make it your own from that dial. So if you are a black and white shooter, this might be for you. Keep in mind, you can get the JPEG in black and white, but you still have the RAW file. So if you go, you know what? I kind of don't want it in uh, black and white. It's still there in color in the RAW file. So it's kind of cool that you're working in black and white, but you have the option later on in post, right? Now, what's really cool is you get the flip out screen. So if you do want to use this for vlogging, if you want to set this down and film yourself, it's totally capable of doing video as well. We're talking about 4K 60 here. That is crop DX and you do get 4K 50, which has a crop, but you have 4K 30 full frame and 10 bit color and log internal. You don't need an external recorder to get N-Log or 10-bit, which is great. That's another sign of the processing power. Now keep in mind, if you are someone that's in the Nikon Z system, you get to use all the Nikon Z mount lenses, right? That 85-1.2, that amazing 51.2, the 24-1 to 20 f4, which I think is one of the most versatile, well-rounded lenses that are out there. 
it'll all work on this camera, so you're already in it, but let's say you're someone that came from the DSLR era and you're in the Miros era and you've got all those EN EL15 batteries, same battery right here is the EN EL15C, which means you can power the camera from USB when it does have a battery in it. It also means you can charge in body as well. So I think that adds to the travel ability of it because I don't have to bring a charger so much. I can just kind of plug it into the USB when I get to the hotel, pump it out, and then I'm good to go on, you know, walking around doing whatever I want to do. So like I said, you have USB-C on this thing if you want to charge it or tether, but you've also got headphone jack along with the HDMI micro and microphone. So if you are someone that's vlogging or you're filming someone, a pain point for a lot of vlogging cameras is there's no headphone jack because you can't check the audio yourself. Well, you don't have to worry about that. You have a headphone jack right here. Nice inclusion. I like it. They're using the real estate of the body being bigger than the ZFC. Makes sense to me. Another interesting choice on this camera, which I don't think I've ever seen before. I, I, I'm trying to rack my brain, but you actually do have dual card slots on here. However, it's SD and micro SD. And I was like, wait, what? So what that's really doing is one, it's bringing the cost down a little bit, but it's also able to keep the camera smaller, which is more feeling to that flat retro style kind of thing they're going for here. But think of it this way, which is when I reorganized my brain about it, I said the micro SD can just stay in the camera as if it's like internal memory that you can change out. And then you're just treating it like it's an SD card slot. Of course, you can treat it like a dual slot camera, but it, I just like the idea that I can always just leave a micro SD in there. And whenever I pick up this camera, even if I don't have a memory card, I have memory. Does that make sense to you guys? I hope it does. Uh, but I think it was an interesting choice, but you're getting a lot out of this camera that I don't think was expected, like the video features, but the stills is no slouch. I mean, we shot it in my studio today and out on the balcony. I want to do a few things with it. Uh, I didn't want to go crazy with the setup because I want to see what the camera's actually doing. I want to see the image quality. And I'm going to tell you, like, the image quality of this thing, immaculate. I mean, that's what Nikon really is known for is that image quality, right? Well, you're getting it out of here, but you're just getting that interface that if you want to get that tactile feel, you've got it here. And if you really want to be one of those people that's really super romantic, take the screen, bada bing, flip it. You're not even looking at a preview anymore. And you're really shooting like you've got an old school camera that you're not looking at the images while you're shooting. I know we talked about this when the ZFC came out, but I'm bringing it up here as well. This is really kind of a camera that you make it your own. You're kind of doing what you want, including different colors that are coming out for it. I'm going to leave that up to Nikon with their own uh, messaging on what's coming out for it. But black is the default color. And there are, they're really putting the 40 millimeter retro F2 on this camera to give it that nice, you know, all in one vintage feel if you want to have that look. So it's one of these cameras that I think speaks to an audience that might not be a pro, might not be prosumer, but as a pro, I could see this being my fun camera, my not work camera. I picked this up. It's not a tool. It's something I'm going to go create with camera, if that makes sense to you as well, right? I'm trying to like put a mindset to this camera because you don't really see this come out from brands too much. And it's really nice to see Nikon, who is a hundred year old camera company, embracing their heritage here, right? And the ZFC was a, a testament to that. And we're seeing that with the ZF with the full frame. This definitely does feel like a very capable camera. I got my girl Ashley in here today and she's a really well-known hairstylist, has some amazing salons in Philly actually. And she's obviously a ZFC fan, but she's just really dynamic. She has all the tattoos. She's got the under the skin implants. She's got an amazing style and her eyes are just incredible, right? So I said, let's just go in the studio and see what happens. So we're talking about really simple setups. Single light beauty dish, maybe a hair light, nothing crazy. So in the studio, we went with the 24 to 70 F4, which is a kit lens, but it's a really nice kit lens. Really good close focusing distance. It doesn't have folks breathing issues. It's really nice and sharp. I like it, small and compact. But then I wanted to try the lens that I think people are gonna to wanna to put with this thing for the look of it, right? The 40 millimeter F2. I said, let's get some full body that doesn't look like it was a shot against the backdrop. And I shot against the windows. So when we shot against the windows with Ashley, I had to slow down my shutter because I was using some of the ambient light to come through the shears, right? So I threw a CTO gel on the strobe. I changed the camera to tungsten to get this nice and blue, a little darker, a little kind of nighttime -y lookish, sort of maybe, just something different than what we were shooting against the gray paper or shooting outside. But because I was slowing down my shutter to get that ambient light in, you start worrying about things like camera shake, right? But I didn't really see any problem with that. This is really great IBIS on this camera. In fact, it's eight stops, which is more than any other camera in the Z series at the time of recording this video. That is with some with certain lenses, uh, but it is still great to see that I can go up to that level of IBIS. But the other thing is that it actually has a different mode. There's focus point 
IBIS in this. What does that mean? Well, it actually helped me out in this situation. So we're shooting vertically. We got Ashley's face at the top third of the frame. It's gonna prioritize where the focus point is and make sure that is what's the most stable. So instead of worrying about the entire sensor, it's really keeping the motion of the sensor mechanically where it needs to be for the thing I'm shooting, for the subject I wanna keep sharp. It's basically working with me for what I'm trying to do rather than just being a generic IBIS. So it really helped me out in that sense. And I think that anybody that's trying to tailor a camera to work the way they, they're working, it's a nice feature to throw in there, especially if you're a pro, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You like stranglehold these cameras into where you wanna put them. And that kind of is talking with you when you're using IBIS in a situation that's more of a spot focus type situation. So we went outside to get some more full body shots and I just used natural light, reflecting a board into this poor girl's eyes while she was melting out there in the sun. But I think we got some good stuff because uh, she has these steel blue eyes that have this amazing texture and harder light will always bring out that kick in those eyes. She's got amazing shape to her lips and everything just kind of worked in the moment, had some little bit of breeze going on there. So we got those like effortlessly looking shots, even though there's a lot of effort in there. Believe me, I'm sweating my brains out right now. But, and I want to thank Alfredo for the assist on the reflector because I don't think I could have done it without somebody bouncing that light in. All right, so overall the ZF is actually pretty surprising. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I don't think it's anything that anybody thought it was going to be. It's actually a step up from there. So you're looking at a high performance camera in a really fun body. This is the camera that makes you want to shoot, that makes you want to pick it up and stay creative and keep going with it. It's a nice camera to put next to your tools that you work as a professional and keep on just having fun with it. Or it's that camera that this is the camera you want to pick up as a creative and go shoot and create some stuff with, along with vlogging, webcam, whatever you need to do. It's kind of handling that and and it's stylish, right? You're gonna wanna carry it on you. You're gonna wanna have it around you. It's not like clunky or weird or just like boring. It's just like a nice thing to keep around on you. So if you guys have any questions for me about the Nikon ZF, the full frame retro body in the Z series, hit me with a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer with my limited use here today. And don't forget that, to check out the links down below for all the specs. If you're looking for specific numbers on things, the links are always down there, guys. And don't forget to like, it really helps us out out here on the channel. And if you wanna get more videos like this, hit subscribe and that bell so you're notified. Not only when we got more videos, but when we go live, as well. So my name is Seth Miranda. This is Adorama TV. This is the Nikon ZF and we will see you next time. Later.